if we are all just a mass of neurons and chemicals and mm -hmm. things firing in our brains, then what decisions are we making? What choices are we making? Where is morality and how does that connect to our future destiny in some new renewed Earth? Well, that, uh, you, ask a whole, you ask a series of interesting questions with respect to this. And, you know, as, 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 I, as, I, as I mentioned, you know, as, 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 a, as a scientist, I'm a materialist. Um, and that is, you know, what I see is that life simply emerges out of the properties of matter itself. And I think the capacity for life is built directly into matter. Um, we haven't solved, for example, the problem of how life first originated on this planet. That's not to say we don't know anything. We actually know a great deal. But I don't see any particular reason, either scientific or theological, uh, to doubt that life arose on this planet spontaneously uh, by ordinary actions of chemicals. And what we know about the prebiotic atmosphere and the prebiotic composition of the Earth supports that sort of thing. Now, the question ultimately is, you know, how do you, uh, 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 how do you emerge from the first primitive cell um, to cells that dominated this planet for most of its history? Um, it took life about two and a half billion years to figure out how to become multicellular. Um, it took another uh, seven or eight hundred million years to figure out how to build an animal. Um, and then from the first animal to us, pretty quick, as it turns out. Um, we are collections of not just the molecules that make us up, but also the cells that make up our bodies. Um, these collections have emergent properties. And what I mean by emergent properties is the hundred trillion or so cells that make up a human being together are capable of doing things that no one in their right mind would ever look at a single cell and say that cell is eventually going to do. I've never looked at a cell on an electron microscope and said, you know, that's a cell that can compose a symphony, um, or that's a cell that can hit a baseball, or do just about anything else. And I think out of these emergent properties comes not just the ability to make moral decisions, but the ability to basically, as an organism made up of all these different parts, to try to ask questions like, what is the truth? And why should we seek it? And ultimately, um, I have always been, I have, I've always been a, a very strong proponent of the idea of free will. And many people have argued, certainly with me and with others, that if we are material beings and we're governed by ordinary physical law, there can be no such thing as, no such thing as free will, simply because we are then machines made up of molecules. And anyone who really thinks that passionately um, wasn't paying attention to physics mm. in the first two decades of the 20th century, mm. where it became very apparent that at its finest level, matter has an inherent unpredictability, which certainly doesn't explain free will, but certainly provides, uh, sort of gives the lie to the notion that any inherent mechanical system is ultimately predictable. And I don't think we are predictable. I think that capacity ultimately is what, that capacity to make choices is ultimately wired into the circuitry of our brain. And that's how we become autonomous beings. That's how we make judgments. That's how we decide to seek the truth and how we make moral decisions. 